So you have decided to start developing games and you have chosen Gado. In this quick tutorial, we are gonna be taking a look at how to create this top-down shooter game that you're seeing right now. Let's begin. So we start off by clicking on 2D scene and then changing the type of that object into a kinematic body. Once you have changed it into a kinematic body, rename it into player or whatever you would like to call your player as. And then add a collision shape as its child. Also add a sprite as its child. Your sprite serves as a character for your game character. To get one, I'm going to be moving one from uh, the one I have already downloaded into a new folder that I'm going to create in the directory, naming it assets. I'm going to be moving a player character, a zombie character, and also a tile sheet for later use. Once you have moved it into the directory, you gotta wait until it imports and then drag and drop the image into the textures property of the sprite. Once you've done so, choose the collision shape and then next to empty, select capsule. Move it over to the left a little bit and then encase your character with the collision shape. You can resize it accordingly. Once you've done so, you can actually hide the collision shape so that it doesn't bother you later on. And now you can save it. I'm going to create a new folder called scenes and I'm going to be saving every single scene into this scene folder. It's actually good practice. Now it's time to program. Create a new script and then create a new folder for the script. I'm going to be calling it a scripts folder and I'm going to be assorting all the scripts into that set folder. You know, it's best practice again. Once you're in there, clear it out everything and then create a new function called physics process. It's going to be in this physics process function that you're going to be doing the majority of the code, including the movement and looking at the mouse. Once you've done so, add a new variable called speed, you can call it anything, as long as it's referring to the speed of the character. I'm going to be setting it to 500, you can set it accordingly. Once you've done so, add a new variable called movement, and this one is going to be a vector too. This movement variable is actually going to be what's going to help you move your character around. Before you get into anything, change the variable speed into an export variable so that you can edit it in the editor later. Next on, we are going to be doing the controls. To do so, you're going to have to assign a few controls in the input map. Over on the top left, choose project, project settings and input map. In there, type in up, down, left and right. Once you've done so, over on to the right of each assigned key, press the plus button, choose key and then press W for up, S for down, A for left and D for right. Once you are mapped in the input keys, it's time to get back into coding. In physics process, write down if input dot is action pressed up movement dot y minus equals 1. Below that, it's almost the same line of code, just a little different if input dot is action pressed down movement dot y plus equals 1. Now this might seem a bit odd to newcomers, but in Godot, the up axis is on negative on the y axis. Continuing, write down if input is action pressed left movement.x minus equals 1. And below that, if input is action pressed right movement.x plus equals 1. Below that, you should add in the line of code movement equals movement slide movement. Movement slide is a function that is built into Godot to make movement of kinematic body characters much easier. At the beginning of the physics process, write in movement equals vector 2. And back down at the end, write down movement equals movement dot normalized times speed. You normalize the movement variable so that your character doesn't go crazy in terms of speed when moving in diagonals. And that's pretty much it for the movement code for the character. To test it out, I'm going to create a different scene and uh, in it I'm going to create a node 2D, rename it into world, add a new sprite. I'll give it a texture of the icon.png, it's just a placeholder and I'm going to append the player character back into the scene using that chain link button and now going back to the player scene I'm going to add in a camera make sure that it's set into current now that you have a camera set in you can test out the scene by clicking on the play button and as you can see the player's character works splendidly now it's time to get your character looking at the mouse so that you can get to aim in your game you can do so in Godot with a single line of code using Godot's built-in functions, and that is look at and in the brackets get global mouse position. 
That's it. That single line of code is going to help you to get your player to look at the mouse. Let's test it out. That is pretty much all you need for the player's controls as of right now. You got the player moving around and you got the player looking around at your mouse. So next up, you're going to add in an enemy. To do so, create a new scene a node 2D can be changed into kinematic body and then just like how we did with the player we're going to first rename it into a zombie we're going to give it a child of a sprite as well as a collision shape that's just standard stuff for any every character right now so once you've done so i'm going to be importing the zombie image that i've downloaded uh, the assets are from kenny i forgot to mention that earlier uh, it's kenny's top down assets pack once you have resized the collision shape uh, using a capsule shape you are pretty much done with almost all of, of setting up your character. Next up, we are going to be creating what's called a global variable. A global variable is practically a variable that you can call or access from anywhere else or any other script. And to do so, all you got to do is create a new scene and uh, rename the node 2D into global and then attach a new script to it. Make sure it's in the scripts folder and then re uh, remove all the default text that comes in it and then type in whatever variable that you want to create. This is basically how we create a global variable. In here, I'm going to be creating the variable called player. I'm not going to be assigning any value to it right now. We're going to be assigning it in the player's script. Now save the scene and then at the top left, choose project, project settings and at the top, there will be an option called auto load and then load the script for the global uh, node not the node itself, not the node scene, but the script for the node. And then add it, and now you're pretty much able to reference this play variable from any other script that you write. And save it and move back to the player script. In the player script, we are going to be adding a new function. Uh, it's the function called ready. It's a function that comes built in just like physics process. And in function ready, we are going to be writing global dot player equals self this basically sets the player character as the player value for the globals variable that we just created so why are we doing this you ask well we just created a global variable so that the zombie character can reference the player character and see and notice which the player character is so that it can actually follow it around just like a zombie does now create a script for the zombie character, add in a variable called speed, this is going to be the speed of your character. I'm setting it uh, lower than the player character obviously, you don't need the characters getting flocked by the zombies. Create a new function physics process and in it we are going to add in look at global.player.position. I'm only adding in a look at position right now so that we can test if it's actually working out and we'll get into the movement code later on. So let's test it out. But of course I have to add in the zombie first, so I'll start it out and when it's when it gonna load up, uh, we must notice that yes, the zombie is staring down our character, uh, it works perfectly fine. So let's start writing down the code for the zombie's movement towards our player. So this is a bit more complicated than the player character but bear with me. In here write down if global dot player equals equals null, then return. Basically what this means is that if there is no assignation to the player variable then that is going to happen with the zombie itself. Below that we are going to create a new variable that is called post to player position to player and we are going to write global dot player dot global position minus global position. Below that we are going to be using Godot's build in function that I mentioned earlier move and collide instead of move and slide in here move and collide using position to player and speed and when you load in you're going to see that the zombie character is practically sticking to the player character like glue and this is because we have to write in two more additional lines of code and that is position to player is equals to position to player dot normalize and below that move and collide position to player times speed times delta the delta is what makes all the difference in this line of code as you can see now that problem has been fixed and the zombie is moving towards the player at a fixed speed. Now I feel like the speed of the player is a bit too much so I'm going to be nerfing the player's speed. I'm going to be decreasing it from 500 to 300 so that uh, it feels a bit more better that way. And I'm also going to be defining a main scene. I'm going to be using the world.tscn as the main scene for my game. 
is practically level 1 and uh, now we can see that uh, player speed has been modified and it suits the game better. So now that we have got two of the main parts of a top down shooter out of the way we are going to be focusing on the next bit and that is about shooting. There are two ways to go about doing this, there is a raycast method and there is the projectile method. A ray cast is basically an invisible laser which goes from point A, a caster, to point B and detects if there has been any collision. A projectile on the other hand, just like its name sounds, is when you spawn in another object which has a momentum of its own but takes on the rotation of the parent object. In this tutorial though, I'm going to be using the ray cast method. To do so, get a ray cast 2D as a child for the player node. Once you have added it in, check the box next to enabled. You have to always remember to check the box next to enabled because by default it is set to disabled. I don't know why that is, but it is what it is. Once you have done so, in the option below, cast 2, set the X to 1000 and Y back to 0. And that's pretty much it for the not part of things, we have to start getting into programming now. But before that, we have to add in some input maps. In the input map section, by going through project, project settings, you have to add in shoot and search for the left mouse button. Once you're done with the input mapping, it's time to get back to the player script. In the player script, below physics process, you're going to have to write if input.isAction just pressed shoot var a raycast.getcollider. Here what we have done is creating a new variable called a. The variable a stores the information that the raycast sends back, in this case what it collided with. Below that we are going to write if raycast dot is colliding, in this situation it is, and a dot has method die, and below that a dot die. So what we have done now, if a or the collider has a method called die or a function called die, then it's going to call that function and the player or the or enemy is going to die. Oh and I almost forgot, before you write any of this, you have to write in a line of code and that is on ready war raycast is equal to dollar sign raycast 2d. This is a line of code that references the raycast child of the player node. Now let's go back to the zombies code and then add in a new function called die so that the player can reference it. All you have to do in die is write in a single line of code which is q3. Now let's get back to the scene and select the zombie and duplicate it twice more so that there's actually something more to shoot it instead of a single zombie. Our top down game is getting together pretty well and now there's only a few more stuff to add in and one of them is the player actually dying. To do so, add in a raycast for the zombie and then set the cast 2 to something like 2025 and the y value all the way back to 0. This is because well obviously zombies don't have any weapons but they are going to kill you if they get too close. Now that we have added in the raycasts, let's get back into the zombies script so that we can program in how the zombie is gonna kill us. Now before that we're going to add in a line on code on the top which is a reference to the raycast 2d. So you're gonna write on ready var raycast equals dollar sign raycast 2d. Once you have referenced the raycast you get back down and then start writing if raycast dot is colliding and just like earlier we create a new variable variable a or var a and then type in raycast dot get collider. And the next line of code is if a dot has method player die then a dot player die. And then we go back to the player script and then create a new function called player die which is a function that has been set to be referred by the zombie script. And all that player die needs is yet again just another single line of code. In here, type down get tree dot reload current scene. This line of code is pretty self-explanatory, but what it does is reload the current scene that is being played. So let's try it out, and it all works just fine. Which concludes our top-down game tutorial. 
In this tutorial, we covered player controller, basic enemy AI, global variables, and 2D raycast shooting. I've gone ahead and added in a tile map, which I'll be covering in a different video. I hope this helped you and I'll be back with another tutorial. And until then, goodbye.